Good evening, my name is Jeremy Staley. I'm with CEC and this is a neighborhood traffic calming public meeting for North Corner Avenue from State Highway 51 ramp to Edison Street. Uh, with me today is uh, Russell Bausch from the city of Tulsa. He's a traffic engineer at the city. Um, and I'm with CEC. CEC has been working with the city of Tulsa for the past several years, uh, helping them to manage and administer the neighborhood traffic calming program. So. I appreciate you joining us for the meeting here um, uh, online. Um, I'd like to um, let me stay on the ground rules. Um, let's see, we'll just start right in on the, present, the presentation. Okay, so uh, Ms. Erin Rustling submitted an application for a traffic calming program back in October of 2020. And in doing so, she became what we call the traffic calming advocate for the street in requesting these speed humps. Um, so we, we weren't able to study that street right away in October of 2020 because we had a big backlog of projects that had backed up. So it wasn't until September of this uh, last year that we were able to do the traffic study to determine whether speed humps were are warranted in this neighborhood. Um, now there's two primary warrants to determine whether speed humps are eligible for the city of Tulsa's uh, criteria. The first is the 85th percentile speed must be at least five miles per hour or greater than the speed limit. And on this particular project, the, the posted speed is 25 miles per hour. Uh, we did have an 85th percentile speed that reached 30.6 miles per hour. So we exceeded more than five miles per hour. The second warrant on this project is uh, the average daily traffic must be between 600 vehicles per day and 5,000 vehicles per day. Can't be less than 600, can't be more than 5,000. In this particular project, we had 740 vehicles per day measured, so we met that particular warrant. Now, once we go through this study and both of those major warrants meet, then we look on to a few other considerations, and um, they are as follows. So the street shall provide access to abutting, resi uh, abutting residential property, and apartment complexes only count as one particular property. Uh, the street shall have no more than one traffic lane in each direction. The street segment must be at least 300 foot in length, and the street shall have a regulatory speed limit of 30 miles per hour or less. The street shall also be curb and gunner, gutter to prevent vehicle runarounds. Uh, we end up with some streets that are um, bar ditch and they're very shallow bar ditches, and a, a vehicle could easily drive around a speed hump should it be placed on that street. Uh, so the city typically does not allow that unless there's extenuating circumstances. It may be that the the ditch on the side of the road is extremely steep or deep to where if a car tries to go around, they would not be able to navigate over the ditch. So uh, that might be able to pass forward. And the last thing is the speed humps will not be installed on a residential street collector where we have traffic signals at both ends of that street that we're looking to do the speed humps on. Well, okay, so once the project meets all of those warrants and it passes those other criteria factors, um, then we, will, we look for construction funding availability. Um, uh, and in this particular case, we do have construction funding available through the IOT2, Improve Our Tulsa 2 program. Um, if that all warrants, then we go through the petition and endorsement process. And in this particular case, uh, well, typically, well, I shouldn't say typically, we have two factors that need to be met on the endorsement process. And if we go down here, we have two particular uh, checks that need to be made on there. One is the petition must uh, be signed by at least 80% of the um, properties along that length of the project, uh, the 80%. Now, if properties are vacant or they have um, people that are like a bed and breakfast type thing, it's not right, uh, Airbnb, some sort of a business that goes in and out of there where people do not live there, whether they rent or they own, those houses are excluded from that list. So we've got to get 80% of the residential properties to sign on that petition. 67% of the residences along that street have to be in favor of it. On this particular case, we ended up with 80% uh, that signed and a full 75% of the residences were in favor of it. We only had one person that uh, signed no. And the next thing, uh, if the street falls within a homeowner's association, a dues paying homeowner's association, we need them to complete an endorsement statement 
that is signed by officers within the HOA. In this particular case, there is no homeowners association, so we did not need to do that on this project. So, um, Aaron, I see you have joined us. I appreciate you joining us. With me is uh, Russell Bausch from the city of Tulsa, one of the traffic engineers. I just completely forgot. I'm uh, down okay. in Dallas I'm glad for you work. Could join us. We started well, a, a neighbor texted me, um, so she might join. She oh. said, I'm, I'm looking for the link. And I thought, oh my gosh, I knew I had something tonight. So I hopped on and I sent it to her. So I'm so sorry, but. Oh, no problem. Just let you know, this is being recorded right now. So okay, I saw um, that. Just be aware of that. And uh, so I'm going through the process to tell him because more than likely people are going to be watching this via video on the city's YouTube channel more so than they are here because okay. there's one on board with us right now. So I've got just a few more words to say. Hopefully she can join us here. Okay, so once the petition and endorsement process is complete, then we go through a speed hump layout design. And this, these speed humps are located according to um, the directions provided in the city of Tulsa's neighborhood traffic calming program. Uh, so there are some minimum distances that we want between speed humps and we don't want to exceed some maximum distance either. So that really dictates a lot of times where these speed humps are going. Uh, for instance, we typically don't want speed humps to be any closer than 200 foot to each other. And at the same time, we don't want them to be any farther than 600 feet. Ideally, we want them in between 250 to 600 feet. Um, now, we don't want to put speed humps every 250 foot straight up. That is not the intention of this. Uh, the intention is to put one per block if it's between three and 500 foot and so forth. When you get longer stretches, you're able to stretch them out. Um, maybe get them four or 500, even 600 foot apart. Um, <clears throat> so another thing that we take into account when we lay out these speed humps are the locations of drives and walkways from homes. Uh, we try to keep these speed humps to where they're at, preferably 10 foot away from a radius of a driveway. In some cases, we do have to shorten that just because the way the driveways are situated, it's very challenging to get speed humps in there. So there's sometimes where we, we make that gap a little bit more, but if possible, we want them to say 10 or more foot away from the driveway. I am now going to share my screen uh, to share um, a speed hump laid out plan with you. One second, let me share that screen. Share that. Let's go right here. Okay. Can y'all see my screen okay? Excellent. Thank you, Russell. I'm going to get this to full view. All right. So what we're looking at, these are the speed hunt layout plans for North Corona Avenue. North is to your right. And uh, to give you an idea of the way the plans are laid out, this over on the right side of this top view says match line A. This goes down to the, the bottom of that first sheet in the bottom left corner, match line A. So if you're driving along North Corona Avenue, you'd reach this point and we come down to here to continue on match line B, then we'll go to the match line B of the next sheet. So these show these big red of uh, these big black rectangles show where these speed humps are being located. Um, just to give you another point of reference, this is that on ramp for the westbound uh, State Highway 51. That's just right over in the left top left side of the screen. So our first speed hump that we have going from the south end of the project up to the north is just south of Cameron Street, uh, right opposite 228 North Quanta Avenue. And these me measure distances between the speed humps or between the PT radius of the, uh, the street return. So we have 240 foot between this speed hump and match line A, and then another 86 between match line A here on the bottom view and this speed hump, meaning that we've got 326 foot between these speed humps, the first two speed humps. So the second speed hump down on this bottom view is in between 320 and 324 North Quanta Avenue. We then have 307 foot between the second speed hump and the third, which is up around 512 North Corn Avenue. And then we move on to this next sheet, and this shows the last speed hump that we've got located, which is just what, north of West Easton Place. And between those two speed humps, we've got roughly 480, yeah, 481 feet between those two speed humps. Now you'll notice we don't have another speed hump between that one and Edison just because we're pretty close to the north end of the project. We're about 300 foot away from it. Um, and it, it didn't make sense to try and squeeze another one in there because we fit within the parameters that we have on the program. 
So that tells you where those speed humps are located. And I'll be happy to go back through if you um, want me to go over any more of that. But first, I'd like to go over what these speed humps look like, what their sizes are. And this particular detail shows that. Um, that this view right in the middle of the screen is a, a plan view of the speed hump. It shows the street here, and then this is your speed hump right in this area. They're roughly 22 foot long from the beginning to end as you would drive over them, and they extend all the way to two foot from the face of the curb is where they begin, and they taper up to their max height over a distance of two foot. That is done to um, make it easier for bicyclists to ride in that gutter area. Uh, and uh, if they were to bump into the speed hump, it's not an abrupt um, transition that they meet. They can easily traverse over that and not have an issue if they were to, to clip it. So we've got some pavement markings that go over these speed humps. They are in the look of chevrons as shown on here. And we also have a speed hump sign that's placed on the approach corner of, of the speed hump from each direction. And that speed hump calls out the word, that the sign calls out the word speed hump, and it's got a little arrow angling down, pointing in the direction where that speed hump is located. And this is done for two reasons. One, that the, the striping on the street will wear out over time, and the city does have a program to go back and restripe things, but sometimes it fades uh, a fair amount before the city restripes it. Having this sign there at all times uh, will clearly give a visual signal for people to know there's a speed hump coming up ahead. Secondly, if there are, is ice or snow on the roadway, uh, people are aware of the speed humps there, particularly people that are plowing the street. We don't want them to strike these speed humps to damage their uh, equipment or to damage the speed hump. So the sign lets them know where that speed hump is located. Get this detail up here in the top corner, this uh, section BB, this shows what it looks like along the gutter. It's not to scale this particular one. We fixed that detail or something, but this goes to show we've got a two foot distance between the face of the curb, and then we have a 24 inch taper from where the speed hump begins to the top of it. Now, section AA would be cut through the middle of the speed hump. Like if you slice right down the center line of the street, section AA shows what that speed hump looks like. They're, they are three and a half inches tall, and that transition is made over a six foot distance. It's a parabolic in shape, as you can see from all of these different call outs. And, and the, the reason for that is it's a very gradual transition when you drive over this. And then there is a roughly a 10 foot long table at the top. Table meaning it's relatively flat. So it's parabolic, you hit a table and parabolic down. By constructing them this way, it, it reduces the speeds on the street. It, it keeps people from driving 35, 40 mile an hour on there. Even if you're, you're pushing 30 mile an hour, it gets pretty rough on there. But if you're driving 20 or 25 mile per hour, the parabolic shapes for the ingress and egress over that speed hump are very typically pretty gentle to where you can drive over them. It doesn't, it doesn't affect you greatly. But if you start pushing over 25 mile per hour, it starts to get pretty rough on you. Uh, objects start flying up and down in your car. So these are intended to keep speeds moderate through the neighborhood. Uh, this detail at the bottom just gives you a bigger blow up of what those paint markings look like. So that is what the, the speed humps look like. I've got it on my uh, back screen. I've got a picture of what one of those looks like um, in a project we did a few years back. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of how big they are, what they look like. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you've got at this time or go over any of the speed hump locations one more time. This is a, a avenue for you guys to be able to provide any comments. So feel free to ask any questions. I just have one thing to mention. Can you hear me? Yes, I sure can, Donna. Okay. Uh, the equipment that was used to count traffic and everything, it has been left on Quana for months. And I have called the mayor's action line of the 311 and they very nicely told me it wasn't their deal. I needed to call the police to pick it up. And then I called the police department and they again very nicely told me I needed to call 311 that it wasn't their deal to be responsible for it or to pick it up. And of course, I didn't know how to unhook it and I wouldn't know where to return it. But I, I think whoever's in charge of it, maybe there's a different way they can monitor 
uh, to make sure it's picked up afterwards. And then maybe the police department and 311. And I'm just talking to you out of, out of respect because I know it's a budget item. And I was, so someone, you'll see, it's the one in front of the three-story apartment. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? The counter that went across the road? So there's a counter that got left out there? Yes. Is it is it our CEC provides those counters in the equipment, but we did this study way back in September of last year. Is the counter still out there? Yes, or or what remains of it is. It okay. it had like two like two black uh hose like uh yes. cables that went across the street and then it was hooked onto a, a pole, I believe, on the um, it may have been one of the bus signs. I can't remember what pole yeah. it was hooked on. Yeah, typically, on yeah, typically we chain them to a sign or some post, and there's a, a, a box. It might be, depending which type of counter it is, it might be six inches wide by about a foot long, or in other cases, it's about eight by eight, eight by eight inches a box. Right. And, um, we do and have I, these I, stolen from time to time, or people run over them with their cars, and we they are damaged at sometimes, but if you've got a counter, we'll be happy. I'll send someone out there to visit with you about it to see if it is ours. Well, it, it's still out in, it's still hooked up out there. It, and again, I've been out of town lately, so I I cannot say that I saw it this week, but I know last week. And I really feel like I dropped the ball, but I didn't know who else who else to call uh, yeah. about. So any, yeah. anyway, this isn't a big complaint. This is very, very minor, but I sure. think it's important the 311 yeah, yeah and that 311 knows who to call it, it'll never happen again but if just 311 so they'll know who to call or the police department will know if it's their job to pick right. it up <laughs> and yeah, get that it to you. hey donna uh, either cc will pick it up or or we'll pick it up and uh, but yeah we'll okay. get that tube counter removed so so it's not out there anymore <laughs> okay. Okay. okay like i said it's minor it's the one in front of the apart, the three-story red brick apartment. Do, so do about know, you know approximately where that is, like on the maps I've got pulled up here. I yeah, it's the first block off of Edison. The first block you, off of before, Ed? right. Okay. It's so you're on the north, north side. It's north, it's north of Easton Place. Okay. So somewhere it's between Easton Place and Edison, right? Right. Right, right. Just real close to Easton Place. There's a White House on the corner and then a three-story brick apartment. And it's right between those two. Okay. All right. And well, my apologies for getting on here late, but this oh, is, no, is no interesting. At all. And no we, I've, li I've lived there for 43 years, and I really appreciate you doing this. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I'm making a note here and we'll I'll send somebody out there to take a look at it tomorrow morning. Um, we yeah, yeah Jeremy, if, if it's yours, if it's easy, go go and pick it up. And if it's ours, just let us know and we'll pick it up. Sure. So, yeah. Because it if it's a counter, it's gonna be yours or it's gonna be the city's or ours. And right. I don't I, I'd find it hard to believe it would be any other consultant because that maintenance zone project is going on west of here they and they don't do we don't ever do traffic counts for those things they i've never done a traffic count for a non-arterial project so it it's either ours or the city but we'll go by and take a look at that thank you for letting us know about that donna yep thank you for bringing it to our attention i i could see the the police thinking we would have nothing like that so i don't know they, the only counters I'm aware of that they've got would be the, the speed, those mini radar things that they set up to keep track of speeds and, and volumes, but it, they won't have the counters like we use that are meant for that. So thank you, Donna. Uh, yes, and I know I missed the earlier part and I really don't want you to repeat anything, but just so I can tell neighbors when I see them, what is the time frame? Please? Sure, and that's the part we hadn't gotten to yet, so that was good timing. So, oh, okay, okay, okay. Sure. So this project is funded through the Improve Our Tulsa II uh, bond issue. There are funds set aside for this. Um, there was a fair amount of money that was set aside, but it wasn't enough for us to be able to go out publicly bid it and group these and pay a contractor to do it. So the city of Tulsa is constructing these with their own streets and stormwater uh, street maintenance crews, and they do a real good job on it. It allows us to construct several of these for the price of paying a contractor do it. And the city of Tulsa then is able to 
uh, get these be sprinkled down and constructed throughout the year compared to a contractor. We have to wait, group everything together, have the contractor go and do it. So uh, the good news about that is the funds are available to construct this. And we've got, um, I think we've got three projects. Well, one is completed. We've got two more up in front of this one that have maybe half a dozen speed humps to be constructed. And they're all in this neighborhood, Easton Heights. We've got a project that will be going on on Easton and one on Union. And then this would be the third one going on uh, in Easton Heights. So they'd be constructed in the order of Easton first, then Union, and then um, Quanta Avenue. So we have to wait uh, for two weeks after this video is posted on the city's YouTube channel. And typically that gets posted by Monday or Tuesday the following week. And then we begin a two week time period to receive any comments from people um, that watch that video. They can call me or email me and I'll give that uh, information out here in just a moment. But once that period has expired, we take any of the comments, we address the plans if we can to uh, make those people happy that had comments on it. And then we finalize the plans and give them to the city and then the city uh, checks their schedule and see what other projects they have going on or if there's urgent maintenance needs, they have to take care of those first. But we anticipate them being able to start on this project probably um, in probably late May, I would imagine. Um, they've got two other sites that they're going to be starting on soon. They've already finished one just earlier this week. So um, they should be able to get on this in late May, I would imagine. Does that sound about right, Russell? Yeah, probably, probably May or June, I, I'd assume. Yeah. Uh, so so you're, long... talking, you're talking about the Quana one in Correct. late May or June. Correct. Correct. Okay, could I, mention, could I mention something else the only sure. because it ties in? And, and I really don't mean to get you off topic or to interrupt. I'm, I'm assuming that you're totally aware of improvements to the pond that are going to be happening. Are you aware? Otherwise, you need to know this if you don't know. I Do you know am, what I'm talking about? Which, which pond are you talking about? Oh, Owen Park, right there on Quana. The, the big pond right there on the west end of Owen Park. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, just east of there. Do, um, do you know? Because what basically, and I'm, I'm telling you what I know and things will change. I believe it's going out for bid this, this summer, but I don't know the starting date because all the money hasn't been found or put together or approved or whatever. But it is a huge project where they're going to totally drain the pond, they are going to take out multitudes of dump trucks full of all the buildup in there. This has happened, oh golly, maybe 20 years ago. And I really can't think of any exact timing is why I'm saying 20. It's a huge project where dump trucks are coming and going all the time. So I just want you to be aware of that because the weight is absolutely humongous because they're filled with all this drudge, dredge, you know, all, all of this stuff where they're, they're pulling out cubic yards of mess on the bottom of the pond to deepen the pond. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that what you're putting in, if, if it's something that could risk being damaged by multitude, <laughs> I've sure. had dump trucks coming and going. You need to know that. I appreciate today. that. I know that. So, looking at that pond, it it's hard to tell where the contractor would ingress and egress out of that park. Um, I, mean, it would I, be, I can I, tell you what, and I don't mean to interrupt, but I can tell you what they did before. They just went up over the sidewalk, just wherever they were located. Sometimes the dump trucks would be on the north side because they were totally dredging, oh, oh, just so much out of that. So sometimes dump trucks would be on the north or the east or the south or the west, and then they would just kind of pull out and get on to the asphalt streets as quickly as they could. Sure, yeah. Well, um, it's hard to tell for sure what would happen on this particular project. I don't think we would hold up construction of, because we've got one speed hump um, in that area between Edison and um, Easton Place. Uh, and then the next speed hump we have is just south of Easton Place, the one that goes east into the park. So 
Um, I, I do know the condition of some of those streets are a bit suspect. Russell pointed that out to me that some of the roadways in pretty rough shape. Um, if they put a lot of heavy trucks on it, they might want to plan on reconstructing part of the roadway because it's it's going to have a rough go if they bring a lot of traffic in and out of there. Um, well, and let me tell you, I I just now pulled up on Quana and I'm parked. Meter. Do you want me to take a picture of it, or is there something that it will oh, say sure. on the yeah. meter I that a... I can tell you who it belongs to? Yeah, if it's on the it. Tulsa Transit bus stop eight three eight one. Okay. It says Metro Count Vehicle Class System. You do have Metro CEC Count? Co property of CEC Corporation. That would that would be one of our counters. Is that enough have... info? I have no idea why that thing is. Hey, I, I tell you, I lost you. Let me get you on speaker. That, that's a good reason. Well, Jeremy, it, it sounds like it is yours. <laughs> does indeed sound like it's got a sticker with our name on it. So, yep. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll... Until, until I get back in the car, I don't think I'm going to be able to hear you because it's on the side, it says traffic data collector, yep. CEC. Yeah. It's okay, a, I'm going to yeah, get back a, in the car, but then I can hear you. Just a moment. I have a quick question yeah, um, for you about the signs. Oh. Um, so I live in 512, so um, we're actually moving, so I won't even be here <laughs> to see the speed bumps come to fruition. Um, but it looks as though there's going to, going to be a speed hump between our house and the neighbor. Yes. So one of my concerns, and I would imagine some of my neighbors, is because our home faces the park. We love sitting on our porch. We love the view of the park. And when you mentioned that there's going to be a big sign right there, that's just something that I would be um, concerned about as a neighbor with where you would put those just to be mindful of where people's porches are. Um, I know that you all are being very mindful of where the driveways are, and I appreciate that. Um, but just something to consider just because the view is one of the best parts of this street. And so just if you're kind of looking out and all of a sudden you've got the speed hump sign right in the middle of your view, I don't know if you all think about that. We, I, I could say we do. Um, we don't consider it as greatly as we want to miss the driveways. We want to miss any of the, the sidewalks that lead from the street up to the house. Because uh, mm -hmm. people commonly park right in front of there and get out and, and walk up to the house. But um, un it's unfortunate, but where the speed hump goes, the sign goes with it on that corner. Um, I do know it was a bit challenging to find places on this street because of the way the drives are. Some of them are pretty close together. Um, hey, Jeremy, and, if you can zoom in on that speed hump right in front of her house yes. for a second. Yeah. That's you can kind of show the orientation of how the sign is going to be. Yeah. And uh, you see where the circle is? That's going to be the I post. And it's going to be real, uh, like a two-inch post. And then the, the sign is going to actually be uh, uh, facing towards the road. So looking you know, looking out of 512, you're almost going to be <laughs> looking at the narrow edge of the sign. OK. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so yeah, you're, you're not going to see the, see the wide edge. You're going to see the, the narrow edge of it. Yeah. And there's, um, just for your alls, I think from in the five houses from the stop sign, five houses north there's only our house with the driveway um everyone else doesn't have a driveway so right so on this Never. particular one we try to keep as far from an intersection as we can just because people can slow down to turn there and and we know there's probably people turning down Quan and then turning to go westbound on Easton street it's a you know a major street mm -hmm. um Pushing it further to the north was challenging because the radius on Easton Place going to the east is, is very, very large, as you can see on this particular view here. And we can't put that speed hump in the middle of that radius because it extends right. it out and it could potentially the, cause the school. issues with the drainage. So yeah. unfortunately, if we're going to put it in between those two streets, there was really only one place for it, and it was right there. Otherwise, That's pushing okay. it to the north of your drive is a problem because we can't fit it there and we don't want to push it closer to the intersection just because of the slowing movement and people turning yeah but yeah i appreciate you telling us that but as russell said you you're going to see maybe at that sign slightly at an angle but it's going to look pretty thin from your point of view okay thank you you're welcome and now you, you say you were moving yeah to move? 
We're moving to Dallas, the Dallas Fort Worth area. Oh wow. That's yeah. A, that's a big metropolitan area. It makes Tulsa look pretty small. Yep. So oh. Tulsa's plenty big enough for me. I love the size. <laughs> traffic isn't terrible. Uh, we call traffic problems when we go to Dallas. I can't complain about traffic in Tulsa because it's just not comparable. So puts yeah. things in perspective. Yeah, I'm here now. So definitely appreciate the traffic in Tulsa. <laughs> okay. Um, so we talked about the timeline. Anticipate this being constructed in May or June probably the end of May, early June, um, I believe. I believe I covered all the bases, unless there's something else you want to talk about, Russell? No, I think you pretty much covered everything. Um, you know, there's going to be a, a two-week time frame after it's posted to, to get any comments. And after that two-week time frame is up, if we don't have any comments, then we're going to proceed with the, with the getting them installed. But if we have comments, then we'll address them uh, within that time frame. All right. Well, Aaron, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, if if any of your neighbors, you know, ask you, hey, you know, or tell you, I missed a meeting. What all did it cover? Um, hope we've got Don and friend come back in here. Um, feel free to let them know about the city's YouTube channel. Um, and if they were to get on YouTube and type in "City of Tulsa traffic calling," it would take you to the videos for that, okay. and that would be the easiest way to find that. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Looks like Donna's connecting back here. Um, I'll, I'll text her. Right when we're closing off. Tell her I appreciate her telling us about the uh, traffic counter. It is indeed CEC's traffic counter. So we'll be out there tomorrow morning to pick that up. Sounds good. Tell Thanks her, so really much for letting her Tell her I really appreciate her letting us know about that. I uh, will. Thank you so much. Thank you all have you. a great day. Hey, Jeremy, uh, you are you send out your, your contact info like you had on oh, previous yes. meetings? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that reminder. Uh, okay. So to uh, notify me if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can call me at 918-663-9401. That's 918-663-9401. Or you could email me at jeremy.staley at connectcec.com. That's Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y dot s t a h l e at connect like connect a cable followed by c e c that'd be charlie echo charlie dot com thank you russell i appreciate you reminding me of that i got thrown off here with all the side talk <laughs> thank you appreciate you all have a great have a day night. all right Aaron and donna thank you thank and you donna. Have, have fun down in dallas